here you can see this picture of cooling tower this the different different uh, schematic things are given in this diagram you can see that at the top the warm water is coming in you can see here it is written warm condenser water is coming in so this warm condenser water is coming in from the chiller okay so in every buildings this chiller are provided in the buildings because of computers people machinery and many other things heat comes out and because of that the temperature of the building increases now to keep the building cool the heat transfer takes place into the chiller water now this warm water needs to be cooled again so for this purpose the cooling tower is used so this warm water is coming in into this cooling tower and it is goes inside and then sprayed with the help of the spray nozzles here inside you can see in the diagram that the spray nozzles are there who are spraying the warm water into the packing or also known as fill now in this fill the ambient air or the cooling air comes in now in the fill the cooling air comes in contact with the warm water and because of the temperature difference the heat transfer takes place after the heat transfer this cooling air after the heat transfer becomes warm and this warmer air gets out as the fan is provided at the top and this water after the heat transfer becomes cool and this cool cooling water is collected at the bottom basin and in this bottom basin this cooling water is then collected out now the air is sucked in into the cooling tower now how the air is sucked in because a fan is provided at the top as the fan runs it sucks the air into the cooling tower because the fan pulls the air out and to pull the air out you need to suck in the air first so here at just above the bottom you can see that in the diagram cool air in the symbol is there cool air in so this cool air in is because of the fan provided at the top who wants to suck the air out or who wants to pull the air out so that is how the air is sucked in so this type of cooling tower is also known as the induced air cooling tower okay it is not natural it is induced draft cooling tower okay and the water comes down the air comes up this can also be known as the counter flow cooling tower now the material of the fill is uh, maybe of plastic okay it may be of any other material of construction but plastic gives the more heat transfer area and thus enhances the heat transfer rate now just at the top uh, below the fan there are drift eliminators are provided now what is the purpose of drift eliminator when the heat transfer is taking place between the cooling air and the warm water along with the heat transfer some of the water droplets also vaporizes and it gets added into the air and it makes the air more humid it makes the air moist so this moisture or humid air when goes up it hits the drift eliminators so in the forward images we will also see the shape of the drift eliminator so as the air moved past the drift eliminator it strikes and the moisture present in the air loses the energy and because of that this moisture comes down and condenses and this condensed moisture can be collected at the bottom basin so in all this is the cooling tower it can be used to cool down the buildings or it can also be used along with the heat exchangers in the heat exchanger our purpose is to remove the heat okay and for that purpose we need the cooling water and to ensure the proper supply of cooling water cooling towers are used now in this photo you can see that there are two pipes one of the pipe is for the cooling uh, one of the pipes is for the warmer water comes warmer water comes in and the other pipe 
is for the cooling water goes out and at the top a fan is provided which I discussed earlier and this fan is used to pull the air out. Now to suck in the air here you can see that in the blue area the air is sucked in okay so this blue area is all on the four sides okay so this is the area in which the air is sucked in all the four sides filter is provided as the air is sucked in this filter doesn't allow the dust to come in or the sunlight only the air is coming in okay so that is the purpose of filter on the four sides at the top this is the fan that suck the air out this fan runs with the help of a motor in the blue you can see the motor that can be mounted in or out of the cooling tower now that is the inside picture of the spray nozzles you can see this yellow pipe <clears throat> in this yellow pipe the warm water is coming in and with the help of spray, spray nozzles it sprays out in the fill now this is the picture of the fill in which the warmer water is coming from the pipe or from the chiller and this is how the spray of the water on the fill takes place now the clearer picture is this one here you can see that the water flows down through the fill in the form of the thin film okay so on both of the sides of the fill the water flows down in the form of thin fill now how the warmer air goes out you can see here this is the direction of the airflow cool ambient air drawn in by the fan moves in the opposite direction to the warmer water and this is how the heat transfer is taking place between the ambient air and the warmer water okay now the picture of the drift eliminator so this is the drift eliminator that i discussed initially so look at the shape as the air contains the water droplets comes in and strikes this drift eliminator the moisture present in the air loses the energy and condenses out so because of this shape only we can achieve the condensation now how you can see that in this picture this small small blue droplets this is how the condensing water comes out and here on the right hand side you can see that if no drift eliminator were there then there will be no recovery of the water so the basic purpose of the drift eliminator is to recover the water that will go out if there were no drift eliminator <clears throat> now the bottom picture so this is the bottom picture in which the cooling water is get stored and on the left hand side you can see the bigger pipe so from that pipe the condenser water which is the cooled water gets out and sent back to the chiller and the cycle continues now on the right hand side you can see that in this picture now this uh, where the mouse is located this pipe is known as the inlet pipe okay and this pipe ensures a certain water level in this bottom basin okay so it is attached with this uh, the round circle you can see that this you can see a ball ball type also present on our tanks in the homes to ensure the certain water level so if the water level goes down this bowl also goes down and it open up the inlet of the water so in this picture next picture you can see that as the level goes down <clears throat> the water from the inlet pipe comes in to fill up the water or you can see to, to make up the water because the water that is going to the chiller must be same so to make up the water loss okay this inlet pipe is provided now below this inlet pipe there is an overflow pipe you can see in this picture so this overflow pipe ensures that if the water level is above then the certain limit okay so it must not go up so to ensure its water level whatever whatever is extra water that sent out through this overflow pipe so you can see that in this picture how it is taking place like this so the water level is up it should not wet the surface and that's why it goes out through the overflow pipe now below it is a drain pipe now in our warmer water it contains the bacteria it also contains the salts okay so as the water evaporates 
the water droplet goes into the air but the salts remain in the water itself so as the cold water comes down in the basin these salts get collected at the bottom now we do not want that these salts to go out to the chiller again that is why this drain pipe is provided so after a certain level of this salts because of the drain pipe these are coming out of this basin along with the basin water and to maintain the water level we have the, the net pipe already there up which is explained now in the next picture we will understand the range and the approach to understand the cooling tower performance so in this picture you can see in the red this is the hot water temperature in means the temperature at which the warm water coming into the cooling tower and this blue arrow is the temperature of the water going out of the cooling tower okay so difference between the temperatures of the water coming in and out is known as the range the temperature at which the air is coming in okay the difference between that temperature and the temperature at which the cold water is obtained this difference is known as approach so this concept of range and approach is used to understand the cooling tower capacity or the cooling tower performance okay range is something that we are actually achieving and approach is something that we should achieve or we want to achieve now in this in this picture you can see the exact definitions what is the range and what is approach range is the difference between the cooling tower water inlet and the outlet temperature of the water outlet so the temperature at which the warm water comes in and the temperature at which the cold water goes out the difference between the temperature is known as the range approach is the difference between the cooling water cooling tower outlet cold water temperature and the ambient air wet bulb temperature okay remember whenever we measure the temperature the temperature is always the wet bulb temperature so in the atmosphere there is ambient air and that ambient air is having a temperature that temperature is the wet bulb temperature so the temperature at which the cooling water goes out and the temperature at which the air is sucked in or the ambient air water temperature the difference between those two temperatures is known as the approach okay now it is written that here approach is the better indicator of the cooling tower performance because if approach is less the performance of the cooling tower is better now cooling tower effectiveness here you can see the formula written cooling tower effectiveness is defined as the range divided by the range plus approach okay so this is how the effectiveness is defined range is something that we are achieving and range plus approach it is something that we want to achieve in the language of mass transfer i can also explain that this is the mass transfer that is achieved to the mass transfer that should be achieved or in other words it is a ratio of the actual mass transfer to the ideal mass transfer or in terms of heat transfer it is a ratio of actual heat transfer to the ideal heat transfer that is achieved now the cooling capacity it is the heat rejected in kilo calorie per hour and it is a product of mass flow rate into the specific heat into the temperature difference that is mcp theta next in the next picture we see the factors that affects the cooling tower size so these are the factors you can read here cooling tower size is affected by the heat load range approach and the wet bulb temperature when three of these four quantities are held constant tower size varies in the following manner it is directly varies with the heat load inversely with the range inversely with the approach and inversely with the entering wet bulb temperature so if the range increases cooling tower size decreases as it varies inversely as approach increases the size decreases as wet bulb temperature increases the size decreases and so on